about Bitcoin versus gold. So when we talk about Bitcoin versus gold, we're talking about a form of money. And it's hard to conceptualize and understand money because it's so ingrained in us, you know, just the concept of paper currency and what that means. We think it has value because from a young age, we're mowing lawns, we get a little bit of coin in our pocket or a dollar bill, and that has value to us. But we never, it's hard to question where that value actually comes from. How much do you get paid to mow a yard in Allegheny, New York? You know, it depends on the person. Sure. I squeeze as much out of them as I possibly could. The average sized um, yard? $10. $10. Okay. $10. Seems a little low today, doesn't it? It does. That'd probably be about $35 <laughs> yeah, it's, it's gone off. But sorry, yeah. I digress. Um, so I think what we need to start by looking at is sort of the history of both of these different asset classes. The history of gold, which was pretty much money up until 1971 when the U.S. ended the, uh, the convertibility, which meant they could no longer convert fiat currency to gold. So the history of gold, the history of money, sort of begins in Egypt at 1500 B.C., and then, you know, a thousand years after that, Lydia and ancient Rome came along and they created gold coins. And the reason they created gold, gold coins was so that it would be easier to weigh because otherwise they would have to physically weigh the amount in order if I were to buy something from you, you'd have to have a scale, you know, kind of like drug dealers do today. Sure. So coins simplified that process. So that's why gold coins... Standardizes it. It standardizes it, correct. Okay. So that's why we have different denominations. Um, it all traces back to that. So it stayed that way for a very long time, you know, about 1,500, 2,000 years. And then in 1792, we have the Coinage Act in the U.S., the newly born U.S. country. And then in 1933, of course, we had the Great Depression, and FDR takes U.S. off of the domestic gold standard during the Depression. And during that time, the U.S. government made it actually illegal to hold gold, so they reclaimed all gold that was held by U.S. citizens, which I, I never knew until I read this the other day. I never knew a government could do that. So it seems nothing is truly safe uh, with the centralized government. Of course, they would pay you for it, but to battle uh, deflation, that was the only option they had. Yeah. Well, and I mean, when I look at this, obviously, there's no real debate around whether or not gold is money or gold has some value. It's clearly been around and, and used for those purposes for quite some time now. Though the fact that you have these periods in time where, for one reason or another, gold has been confiscated, um, like you said, you were paid for it, but the fact that there can be some new rules that change the game, yeah. you kind of wonder when we look at Bitcoin as this digital gold, if that could happen as well. But that's the history of gold. What about the history of Bitcoin? The history of Bitcoin is short. Um, it's tough to compare gold to Bitcoin because Bitcoin... You know, it was obviously everybody that's watching this probably knows Satoshi Nakamoto, 2008, the white paper came out, 2009, first block was mined. Um, but it's a new currency. We don't have, we have, I mean, compared to, relative to gold, it's very difficult to compare these two asset classes. Um, fundamentally, we can compare them, but to look at them historically and throughout time, it's, it's impossible to do so. They do have a lot of the same characteristics, yeah, though, right? I mean, they do. certainly gold has been around for much longer. It has the track record. Whether Bitcoin continues to exist is sustained. I would argue that it will, but we don't know. It just really doesn't right. have that track record. We can't predict the future, obviously. We do know that gold has been around for quite some time. We've talked a bit on the show, though, about the reason or maybe more so the need um, for Bitcoin or for investing in assets like Bitcoin, like gold, as a way to hedge the debasement of currency, right? as a way to kind of get away from um, or detach from this system that we're in that seems to be, to some extent, I, I, maybe I wouldn't say abused, but we're on a path of what seems to be unsustainable debt, yeah. money printing, the debasement of fiat currency. And I want to point out something that I found was very interesting. I mean, you, you hear this quite often as part of the discussion. But if we go back to uh, when we basically went off of the gold standard. Right, in 1971, the last bullet on there, U.S. gold, U.S. ends gold convertibility. So your fiat currency can no longer be redeemed for gold. This so, is a really important point in time. It was. And there was a lot of, um, 
dissent around this decision. We just accept it because it's true now, but at the time, a lot of people did not agree with it. And uh, Milton Friedman, the famed Chicago uh, economist, said, inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. Um, and there were, again, a lot of proponents when, when the government decided to do this. And looking at this chart right now, we can see that arrow pointing to 1971. Um, and we can see how the government clearly took advantage of the ability to print. Because, I mean, just it's incredible looking at that chart. You wonder where that would be today if we still um, allowed for you know, gold convertibility. Yeah, I think when you look at this, it definitely supports the idea that you need some store of value. You need to yeah. be able to hedge these activities that we've pointed out. The question then becomes when you actually look at the data, is gold a store of value? And we'll get into Bitcoin in a second because this transitions into the idea that Bitcoin is digital gold. Many of the same properties. There's the argument that it's not as durable. Sure, in worst case scenario, nuclear winter apocalypse sort of scenario, I don't think you're using Bitcoin. Um, gold is, is a bit more durable in that sense. Yeah. Um, it's also uh, a very apocalyptic scenario. Well, and it's also probably more widely accepted. If we did some sort of mad mic on the street and we went around and we asked everybody, what's the best way to hedge currency debasement? Yeah. Because those are the sorts of questions you ask on the street. Every day of my life. I, I don't, don't know. Friends. You know, I don't think many people would say Bitcoin today. I think most people naturally kind of think of gold if you're even thinking about this at all. But when you look at this, is gold actually a store of value? And I think yeah. you've, you, you've found something very interesting to me. So this is uh, Cam Harvey, who has uh, worked with us a little bit before on the Luckbuck magazine. Um, so he did a study where he was able to figure out how much Roman, I think it was a Roman um, centurion, so you know, equivalent of a captain today, was paid in gold going back you know, over 2,000 years. Um, and it was 38 Point six ounces, and he equivalented that to the current pay of a captain in uh, the U.S. Army today. Okay. So that correlation, I mean, it's just phenomenal to think 2,000 years ago, gold has the same amount, the same value as it does today. There's because you can't print more, you know. So it's a store value. Yeah. But is it actually an inflation hedge? And That's, there, there's an interesting yeah. debate here around Bitcoin as well, because many people will point to the response in the market to CPI month to month, right? And we know where there's some flaws there, but people point to whatever Bitcoin is doing at the time that the CPI data comes out and they'll say, look, it's going down, inflation's going up. It's not a hedge right. to inflation. What about gold? When you actually look at this, I mean, sure, store of value, if we want to compare it to what soldiers were paid and then looking at today's dollars, um, it's about the same. So in some cases, right? You maybe over time hold your purchasing power, but when you look at it against inflation, what do you see? Yeah, and again, this chart is from Cam as well from a post he did. Um, so what we're looking at here is the incredible volatility of gold um, over the long term, and this is only going back to 75, but it tends to be an inflation hedge, but you could go decades where that doesn't prove true. So in my opinion, it's not a sure thing because the human life is what, 80, 90 years. It's very possible to go 15 years as we can see with it not being an adequate hedge against inflation. Um, over 500 years, sure, but over our lifespan, no. That's too much of a risk to say that gold is a hedge against inflation. What I find fascinating about this is where this gets back into kind of that positive territory. And it's right around 2009, 2010, which coincides with really emergency monetary policy. Mm -hmm. um, in some cases, experimental monetary policy, previously only really deployed in Japan. And that was a policy that's in place for a decade, up until just last year or so. We've had negative, not negative interest rates. Um, there's been a lot of negative yielding debt, but zero interest rate policy. 100 billion a month in terms of asset purchases. I mean, and not just out of the Fed, but globally, you get right. the story. That really seems to be when this becomes more of that inflation hedge. I'm not saying this is a CPI hedge yeah. necessarily, 
But it gets back to this concept of currency debasement and needing something to, at the very least, protect against that. It's almost a panic buy, it seems like, at this time, because nobody else, they don't know what else to buy, so they go to gold, because they presume it can't be debased. Um, and they're right, of course, but does it battle inf inflation properly? And it's, you know, we're looking at the, we're looking at supreme examples, but for most of history, it's it's pretty flat, the economy. It goes up and down a little, there's mild recessions. And during those times, which is, you know, 80% of the time, it doesn't seem to be, to be a very great inflation hedge. It's these moments of crisis that really sends it up and it performs as it should. Which is a relatively new phenomenon, I suppose. Yeah. Again, getting back to the emergency monetary policy that's been in place or is in place at times. So, and Ryan, another thing I want to point out in this chart is the launch of the gold ETF, which was, it looks like around 2005. And interest in there, because accessibility went up, kind sure. of like the Bitcoin ETF. So I look at this chart since the gold ETF launched, um, and it seems to be, you know, for inflation, it seems to be performing better just because that accessibility is, has gone up so much. Yeah, that's a great point. We'll see if it plays out in similar fashion in crypto when we yeah. look back. But... To your point about accessibility and being able to invest in this, it becomes so much easier when you have that ETF vehicle, especially around something like a commodity, yeah, like gold here. Your alternative otherwise is what you go to the pawn shop or you figure out a way to, I suppose, acquire physical gold yeah. in some form. Clearly there's gold jewelry that you can buy, but it's just not as easy as it is today where I can go into my Tasty Trade platform, I can type in GLD, I can get long options, yeah. I can buy the underlying ETF, I can get that exposure. You can do that now with Bitcoin as well. Yeah, like as soon as the Bitcoin ETF came out, the legit ETF, the spot ETF, um, I doubled my exposure in Bitcoin because I have IRAs. That's for most people our age, and even older people keep their money. And it's just, you know, I think my dad was the same way. He never owned a Bitcoin until the ETF came out because Coinbase, self-custody wallets, for a lot of people, that's that's a lot. But he owns Bitcoin in. now. Or he owns Bitcoin it now because now. of the ETF. And I own twice as much because of the ETF okay. in my retirement accounts. Well, I want to compare gold to Bitcoin now, looking at the market data that we have available and kind of get into this idea of whether one is better than the other. I think everyone's aware relative to gold, Bitcoin really doesn't matter. It's really small, put it yeah. that way. We have the market cap of the two here. And if we look at you know current pr prices of gold, we've got a market cap that's closer to 11 trillion, right? Um, a little bit above, it looks like at this point, Bitcoin, uh, one, one and a half, somewhere in between there. <laughs> right very now, low. Right? Sure. Very small relative to Bitcoin, but arguably has many of the same properties, um, or excuse me, very small relative to gold, but arguably has many of the same properties as gold. It's almost, um, I, when I think of Bitcoin, it's almost like a new gold that, just say it is gold. It's a new version of gold that was introduced today, but we know there's going to be only so much mine for the next 150 years, and then it's going to just completely dissolve away. It's, you can almost make that correlation to say it is gold, and it's, and it's, you know you can't touch it. There's no tangibility to it. But when I when they call it Bitcoin digital gold, it could be thought of exactly like gold, except the supply is halved every four years. Yeah, I mean we're talking about if we look at both of these as money, it's hard money. Um, can't really be debased. I mean, we know that there's a finite supply of Bitcoin, there's a finite supply of gold. I suppose there are risks to both of those ideas. People will throw out the idea that we might mine gold from asteroids and all of a sudden there's an abundance of supply. Or maybe there's gold that we discover here on Earth that we just haven't found yet, right? Yeah. There's always the business of mining and, and trying to find more deposits. So there could be more supply. But we have a pretty good idea of how much is, generally speaking, how it much is, is out For our there, lifetime, right? we're probably going to be okay with our gold. Gold can't be debased. Bitcoin can't be debased. They're both, in some ways, used as money or could be used uh, to transfer value. We know gold certainly has in the past, and, and Bitcoin's a digital version of that concept. They're divisible. They are you know, portable. So they have a lot of the same characteristics. But it's just very early when we look at Bitcoin in terms of the market cap, because I believe it's going to continue to go up. If you had to pick between the two, not forcing you to choose one over the other, but if you had to, where would you fall? Well, I would have both 
I would have, if I had thousand dollars, seven hundred would go into Bitcoin, three hundred would go into gold. Okay. And so I you would be overweight. You'd Mexican be overweight Bitcoin. Bitcoin here. I would be just because I'm young and I can stomach the volatility, and I think that there is a lot more upside potential. I think Bitcoin could easily quadruple in value. I can't say the same of gold. Yeah, I want to talk about the volatility a little bit, but first, let's take a look at the performance. It's not really fair when we compare the two. I mean, if you look at recent headlines, we've got gold at all-time highs. Bitcoin is coming off of all-time highs. Gold's been at an all-time high, I think, for the last four or five days or so in a row. Uh, clearly more kind of macro influence on gold. I think gold, when you look at correlations, is certainly more so driven by the dollar, is driven by policy, is a function of where real rates are. And gold has been ripping higher for one reason or another here today. It's also, you know, could be in some cases, it's a geopolitical risk hedge. It's a war hedge. Yeah. It's that currency debasement hedge. I don't think Bitcoin has proven to be that yet, given it hasn't been around that long. What we do know, we do see jumps in Bitcoin when there's rumors of something awful happening monetarily or otherwise. We do see it tend to be rising um, in value. I, I've noticed that over the last couple of years. Yeah, that's a good point. It's always ephemeral and short-lived, but I, I have seen that. We do know that Bitcoin is a lot more volatile than gold, and the good times are great. We're in maybe one of those periods right now. If you look at the last year... Bitcoin's up 131%, and while gold is getting a lot of attention here over the last week, it's actually only up about 17% on the year. When you look at this on a five-year period, the chart's almost comical because Bitcoin's up thousands of percentage points. So if you go back to inception versus gold over that same period of time, which is obviously going to be trading more so sideways, uh, just given it's been around for much longer and hasn't done as, as well over the last you know, few years compared comparably uh, or compared to to Bitcoin. But here's the last year of performance. They're both doing well. But let's talk about the volatility because that's something that you have to be able to stomach. When I look at gold, gold has a volatility right now of about 17 percent. Bitcoin is a sixty six thousand dollar asset or sixty five thousand dollar wherever we are right now. That has a seventy two percent implied volatility trades much higher at times and so i think that's really what you have to be able to stomach is just how much this can move even yeah. though they both have similar characteristics if you do not want this volatility in your portfolio you get the characteristics with gold but you don't get the volatility you also don't get necessarily the outperformance yeah and so just to put that into numbers what does 72% mean? What does 17% mean when we look at those underlying prices? Well, it's an expected move when we look at Bitcoin of almost $7,000. Happens to be about 10% of the current price. And that's, that's, a, what, that's a weekly move. That's a weekly move. Yeah. So what this is looking at is if I take the implied volatility from the options that are on Bitcoin and 72%, the spot price is 66,000, then we would within one standard deviation about 70% of the time, two thirds of the time, we would expect that, you know, a, a move in Bitcoin on a weekly basis of 10% one way or the other to the upside to the downside is completely within reason within yeah. the realm of, you know, it's a high probability outcome. When you look at gold, we're talking about two and a half percent given implied vol 17% and an underlying price of $2,300. So they might both be correlated um, were driven by the same factors over time, you're just going to have a lot less volatility in, in gold than in Bitcoin, which is probably not a surprise to anybody. Yeah. Um, Ryan, you're familiar with Polymarket, the betting uh, Web3, the prediction market, which unfortunately we can't connect to in the U.S., but I've seen several opportunities where I would love to place trades on there. And one was uh, last month, there was a they were pricing in a 31% chance of Bitcoin hitting $250,000 by the end of the year. Did you sell that? It's high. It's a lot. I mean, I, I've come out, we've done some work around the halving and had fun with it and said, look, 180000 150000 I mean, it's a six-figure yeah. uh, number. 250000 seems a bit aggressive, but I suppose anything's possible. Where is gold if Bitcoin is at 250000 I mean... A lot lower. I mean, proportionately, a lot lower. I mean, but I mean, no. But, but relative yeah. to its current price, it's at twenty three hundred. Yeah. Do you think you see a five thousand dollar gold price, a ten thousand yeah. dollar gold price, 
Uh, that's well, another interesting trade. I mean, they're, they're trading pretty, they're trading close to one another right now. But I think if Bitcoin does go to these levels, it's going to leave gold in the dust. Nobody's going to think about gold. If people do have gold, they're going to be selling it to go into Bitcoin because Bitcoin just keeps going up. Um, I think that's how that will play out. And maybe, if, maybe this will play out. If Bitcoin does hit 250000 by the end of the year, 31% chance. Unlikely. I don't think gold is going to be anywhere near that. It's going to be a, a Bitcoin game. We shall see. Let me ask you, though, based on what we've discussed here, the data that you've looked at, do you think that these are correlated to one another? Because um, one I mean, is gold, one's digital gold. Yeah. yeah. Right? Are they well, going to be they are? positively correlated, there isn't a lot negatively of, correlated? I, well, I mean, it seems like they're more positively correlated now. But again, it's a very short lifespan. I mean, half the world, you know, half the country just got access to Bitcoin for the first time just a couple months ago. So as we see these, you know, the Bitcoin ETF hit a record for most popular ETF ever in the history of ETFs. So I think we need to let this play out for a couple of years. I think there is going to be a correlation, but I don't think it's going to be as strong as, as some people might suppose it to be. Bitcoin is its, is its own entity, its own, its own beast. And I don't think gold is going to keep up with it. Well, looking at the last three years here, we had Glenn run the numbers. Shout out to Glenn. This is a 36-month correlation of daily price changes. And I wanted to throw the dollar in here as well because I think it's important. It's a, it's a key piece to the story that Which we're trying to UUP tell. UUP is the dollar. UUP is a dollar index ETF that um, I use as a proxy for, uh, for the dollar index and is a, you know, one of the ways that you can run these numbers here. Going into this, I thought for sure we would see a very strong positive correlation over time. And it might be different when you look at this on shorter time frames. But over a three month or three year period, I thought for sure the correlation between Bitcoin and gold would be much, much stronger. It's really non existent. It's yeah. not positively correlated. It's not negatively correlated. It's just not correlated. Hmm. Uh, or at least it hasn't been over the last few years. When we look at GLD, ETF, um, as a proxy for gold, and we look at the spot price of Bitcoin over that period of time, 0 0.07. That said, they both are influenced by the dollar, maybe gold more so, given its role in the financial system versus, uh, or as an investable asset versus Bitcoin. But if the dollar is up, it's not a good thing for gold, and it's probably not a good thing for Bitcoin either. And so it's interesting that you know we have uh, we've seen a little bit of weakness in the dollar here over the last week, given where it is. But the dollar's been strengthening. Gold's at all-time highs. Bitcoin's at all-time highs. Hmm. Um, the dollar's fallen a little bit here. But yeah, I think if you're in an environment where you have persistent dollar strength, it's probably not an environment where gold is outperforming or Bitcoin is outperforming um, because of the correlation that we observe here. But I thought this was interesting because I thought for sure gold and Bitcoin would be. Yeah a much stronger yeah, this positive is, correlation. This is surprising. Um, it's, you know, it's, Bitcoin is young. We simply don't have the time to go into the, for people to really understand what Bitcoin is and how it should be traded against other asset classes. That'll come in time, I think, more clearly than even gold because of its limited supply. Probably in the next 10 or 15 years, I think we'll, we will see correlations, but it's just, I, they're going to be all over the place. It's too young. Yeah, that's a great point, Mike, to maybe kind of end on. And we'll take a look at just um, you know, the, the two here one more time. But when you're talking about this, you're talking about hedging currency debasement. You're talking about long-term inflation and using gold versus Bitcoin. You have to have a long-term time horizon. This yeah. isn't a one-month trade or even a one-year view that I think you can take. And as a result, I think it makes sense to have both of these. It makes sense to have both of these just given how wildly different the volatilities are, how far apart they are. Yeah. I mean, there is no volatility in gold versus Bitcoin. Obviously, there's some volatility, 17 to 20 percent or so. But versus Bitcoin, there's no volatility in gold. Uh, it doesn't move, right? And so that's probably what you just need to consider. And you want to have them both because they're not correlated. You know, we've talked at times where they haven't been correlated, but we've talked at times about how, you know, Bitcoin is this diversifying agent in your portfolio because it has this massive upside. It also has massive downside. You've got to be used to it falling by 70 to 80%.
But in a portfolio, if you have a little bit of this, that volatility component typically is overshadowed by the upside performance. And then, you know, in maybe that same bucket, you do have gold, but it's not correlated to Bitcoin and doesn't have as much volatility, though it is something that maybe diversifies you and hedges against that longer term currency debasement or just, you know, periods of, of dollar weakness. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, even, you know, we talk about time horizon. I look at the chart of gold adjusted for inflation that we saw, and that goes back to 1975, and I still couldn't get a clear idea. I wanted to go back another 75 years, 200 years um, to get an idea. So I think it's going to be a while before things settle down and we can call a spade a spade here. Well, as we wrap things up, just want to shout out everybody that's engaging and chatting in the live chat here. This is awesome. We've got a call for 5600 from Greasy. Mm. I'm assuming that's the gold price. Uh, could be the Bitcoin price. I hope you it's gold, know. Brian, or I have to get another job. Surfer boy, 3000 If Bitcoin goes to 250 k gold bullions will melt. And um, I don't know, one of my favorite comments here is from Grumpy Mike. Killed my lawn, <laughs> killed my lawn and planted negative... A negative, excuse me, planted native plants 12 years ago. Best thing ever. Birds, lizards, and bees dig it. No more mowing. So, I wonder where he lives. Some advice. Um, I don't know. We'll have to find out. But that said, that is our show today. Uh, again, if you want to get more from us, check out the best crypto email you'll read all week. Go over to tastycrypto.com, sign up every Saturday morning fresh in your inbox this is your best work i think and no offense you do great great work all week but your best better. work is on saturday mornings yeah. with the newsletter yeah. it's one of my favorite reads honestly well i enjoy writing ryan so yeah um sign up for it check it out the best crypto email you'll read all week but that's going to do it for our show we'll be back on monday with frank taking a look at our liquidity pools walking through some more strategies the pool is grinding mike so we're excited about that but we'll be back next monday victor jones is up next for the price of truth until then i'm ryan grace i'm mad mike this is the tasty crypto show thanks for watching